is a little bit more personal and I'm literally terrified, but uh, here it goes. This is called um, Borrowed Time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The mouse runs up the clock. The clock strikes one, the mouse runs down. Hickory dickory dock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The clock strikes 317 Thanksgiving 2009. My grandma places the last casserole dish filled to the brim with brick red yams and marshmallows on top of an already flowing ta overflowing table and begins to count the surrounding chairs for the 40th time that afternoon, but somehow on this, the 41st time of counting these chairs, we seem to have come up short again. As my sister and I search room to room, tracking down the chair that seems to elude us at every family gathering, I remember telling myself that next Thanksgiving, they wouldn't need to go searching. They'd be able to fit at the table without me. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The mouse runs up with the clock. The clock strikes 435 Saturday, May 26, 2013. See, even after I no longer actively considered suicide an option, I never thought I'd make it to my graduation. Promised myself I wouldn't make it to my high school graduation, but after years of dodging questions about the future, I turned tassel on my graduation cap and walked across that stage, and from that moment, I began to live on borrowed time. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. See, I believed that my hourglass held only 18 years worth of sand inside, that each minute was only a moment until I became a memory. I started writing suicide notes and funeral plans when I was 12 years old and still keep them in an envelope in my sock drawer just in case. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. When I was little, I wanted to be an Egyptologist dreamed of exploring far-off lands, of discovering a pharaoh's tomb, of living my own video game. I loved ghost stories and knock-knock jokes and, and wanted to be my own storybook character. But never did I dream of red raging scars or eraser-burned arms or the little nagging voice in the back of my mind whispering knock-knock jokes with punchlines punctuated with self-hatred and laughing at me as if they are funny. And I don't remember what it's like to feel the right amount because there are days when I feel so much heart pounding in chest, wheezing out every puff of air, and days when I feel like an ice cube packed in liquid nitrogen. I don't remember what it's like not to look under my bed for monsters, shoving hopes and dreams into my closet because there's no more room inside my brain. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. One time a friend told me that she thought I was doing good and I didn't have the courage to tell her that I don't even know what good looks like, that my best days barely pass as bearable and I have given up hope on praying for anything more than making things manageable because if I have to be lost in the middle of the ocean unsure of where I am and when the next storm is coming I'd at least like to be in a boat <laughs> and when the uh, with two oars so that I can use the strength locked within these arms instead of seeking beneath the waves, life jacket slowly losing air as I sink deeper into salt-soaked seas. I no longer know how to pray for solid ground. Tick tock. I don't want to live for someday. Somehow. Somewhere else, under different circumstances, when I am the person I've always hoped that I could be, eyes glowing with the fiction of a storybook heroine, I am not crafted from word fragments and paper cuts. I am not letters scribbled onto pages two-dimensional and erasable. I am more than a string of adjectives and metaphors cliché and misrepresenting. I am fire and brimstone, glass shards and mosaic metal from stained glass windows. I am nothing, wrapped in nothing, wrapped in empty words and torn out pages, a scrapbook of disfigured paper dolls, but that is what makes life beautiful because no one wants a life they can't get messy. I don't want a life I can't get messy. I want paint splatters and coffee stains and glittered sprinkled like stardust. Books can't bleed, but bodies bruise so easily, and I want all the consequences of being alive. I want blood and tears and bruises. My life wasn't crafted for a happily ever after ending. We all end up in caskets anyway. The final cover closing shut and buried like a time capsule in the backyard. We all end up as bones. But I want my bones to tell a story of being broken but healing of starting small but growing, <laughs> of living life so well that forests get planted on my gravestone. They don't tell you that ending in fairy tales. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The mouse runs up the clock. The clock strikes July 7th, 2018. 
I still don't know how to pray for solid ground. I don't know how to be still, or be happy, or be normal, or be brave, but I am learning how to just be, and be okay with that. Learning that there is no weakness in waiting. See, I have a paperback heart that was supposed to end seven chapters ago, but I am learning to be grateful for each new sentence that gets written. Learning to say thank you for every breath that passes through these lips, for the extra sand added to my hourglass. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Yeah. Woo!